Hi, this is Tim Yoder with Fit Small Business. Today, I'm going to teach you how to manage your bank transactions that come through automatically in your QuickBooks Online bank feeds. This tutorial is one of our 46 free QuickBooks tutorials that you can find by Googling Fit Small Business QuickBooks Online Tutorials. So in a prior lesson, we showed you how to connect your bank accounts to QuickBooks, and now I'm going to show you how to manage the transactions as they're imported. So from our dashboard, let's go to our banking center by clicking on banking and then banking again in our left menu bar. So the first screen that comes up is your banking center and it shows transactions that have automatically been imported from your bank account. So here we have the business checking and the credit card. So today we're going to deal with the transactions that flow over from our checking account. So here we have just a few transactions for the month of October. So each transaction you basically have three choices. You can accept the match that was made automatically by QuickBooks. You can add a transaction and give it the proper expense, vendor, or customer information. Or you can exclude the transaction. To exclude a transaction you would click on it to open it and then you can exclude it down here. Now it should be very rare that you would exclude a transaction because if it went through your bank account then it should somehow be accounted for in your books or you won't be able to reconcile your account. So excluding a transaction is incredibly rare. It's probably only happens when somehow a transaction gets imported from your bank account twice, but QuickBooks should automatically um, uh, avoid that happening. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see, close this back up again. Okay, so let's first go through and let's address the automatic matches that QuickBooks has QuickBooks has come up with. So we've had two checks. So these are paper checks that have cleared. Now paper checks should usually already be in QuickBooks. If you're printing the checks from QuickBooks, then that information should already be in QuickBooks. And so you shouldn't have to enter it again. There should be an automatic match. So to view the match, we can just click on the transaction and it'll give us the information. So it's matching this bank transaction to the QuickBooks check 5022. Okay, well that makes sense, right? That's the description that came over from the bank. On 1018, we wrote a check to Hank Independent for 294.25. So all of that looks good. And so here, this this check 5022, that's information coming from QuickBooks. This is the information that came from the checking account. So we can see it's the same check. If you click on this, it'll actually open up that check so you can see all of the detail, make sure that that as in, that is in fact the transaction. Uh, that you want to be matched to. So I'm going to click match and there we go. Once we match it, it goes from our for review tab over into our categorized tab and there we can see that we matched those transactions and you can actually undo that match if you need to. So let's go back to our for review. Let's do the same thing with this next paper check 5021. It found a match in QuickBooks. Um, so $75, check 5022, matching it there. Well, let's say that this check number doesn't match up, and we have multiple checks for $75. So um, this is not the proper check. So in this case, it is the proper check, but let's pretend it's not the proper check. How you would try to find other checks for $75 is to go to Find Other Matches, and this will give you additional matches. Now, this is the only match we have. Um, but if there were additional $75 checks, you could find them in this screen and then match that $75 bank transaction to the proper check. So again, the key is you can go to that find other matches. Okay, so let's accept this. Click on it again here. Yep, looks good. So let's match it. It now disappears from our for review tab and it will be over here in the categorize tab. Okay, one more match found. This is for a deposit, so let's click on it. Now, most of your deposits, if you're using the invoicing function and the sales receipt function in QuickBooks, then the deposits should already be in your account, in your QuickBooks account. So they should be able to find matches. So in this case, the transaction of 1250 came over and it was matched to a sales receipt that we had issued Big Time Diner for 1250. Let's say excellent, that is the transaction we're after, so let's match it. Now, one thing to keep the one thing 
to notice here is that if you if in is these deposit transactions coming over from the bank are the total amount of the deposit. Now this was a very easy one. The entire check was 1250 from Big Time Diner. It was very easy to match up. Um, so if this 1250 was multiple checks, and if you didn't use the undeposited funds account in QuickBooks Online, then those multiple checks would be showing up individually. So what you could do is you could hit Find Other Matches. In here, there would be a whole bunch of separate deposits that might add up to the 1250 total deposit you could match all of those separate deposits um, to the one deposit so the easier way to do it is to use the uh, undeposited funds account in newer accounts it's actually called I think payments to deposit account um, so if you look at our our how to record uh, payments tutorial you'll see more information on that undeposited funds account but if you don't use the undeposited funds account if you record each individual deposit as a separate I'm sorry, each individual payment you receive on an invoice, if you record that as a separate deposit to your checking account, you can match all of those individual deposits to one lump sum deposit using this match additional, find additional matches. Okay, hope that makes a little sense. Um, if not, um, review our, our how to receive payments tutorial, and that'll give you more information on how to use that undeposited funds account. So this deposit looks good. Let's click match. Okay, so those are all the ones that were automatically matched. Now let's go through and we're going to have to add information individually. So the electronic withdrawal from KCTC, um, it's classified as utilities, and that's fine. That's a good match. So let's click it, see what other detail it gives us. Um, now notice here, it didn't automatically bring in this vendor. So if we're going to want to track expenses by vendor, we need to provide this information. Okay, we're going to add them as a vendor. Okay, category utilities. If it was for a particular customer, we could do that. Let's add our class as administrative and the location as New York. So it's important to note here, right? So don't just click the add button. Open up the transaction and provide all of this additional information. You could just click the add button and it would add it to the utilities expense. But all of this other information is important as well, right? Because you might want to be able to see a list of transactions. If you don't add this uh, KCTC here as the vendor and you later look at transactions for KCTC, this transaction wouldn't show up. It also wouldn't show up in for the location New York or the class administrative. So make sure you fill out the rest of this information so that the transaction has all the necessary fields um, to help you track properly in QuickBooks. If you don't do that, you're just really not using QuickBooks up to its full potential. So let's hit add. And that is going to add it then to your categorized tab. OK, so here's another deposit. Um, Here's another deposit for 1212. Let's click on it to open it up. Um, good, so it didn't find any match. Let's click find a match, to see if it might possibly find a match. Again, here you might find transactions that are not exactly 1212, but a bunch of separate transactions that uh, add up to 1212. Here we have nothing. So it looks as though we never entered this deposit uh, into QuickBooks. So one explanation might be it's not uh, it's not an invoice. So perhaps this was a contribution from the owner. If it was collected from an invoice, then it should already be in QuickBooks. So let's say we do a little investigation. This twelve hundred and twelve dollars is actually from our owner. Okay. So we don't want it to put that in sales. We want to put that in um, something like additional paid in capital. Okay, so this is capital being paid in from our owner. Okay, and hit add. And there we go. Oh, looks like, oh, um, yeah, we have, a, we have a setting that we always want to assign a class. And may as well assign a location as well. Okay. There we go. Now, that was an important one we just did, right, because that reduced our income. QuickBooks had had incorrectly categorized that as a, as a sale and we put that as a capital contribution. Okay, now we'll see these next four transactions offset each other. These are a, a bank fee that was charged and then forgiven. So 
let's just accept all of these as they are and they will offset each other. So add, okay, something's, okay. So we need to assign these to classes. Again, this is because we have a QuickBooks setting um, set so that we can't accidentally record transactions without a class. So let's just go through here. We're adding each of these after putting in the class. Okay, there we go. So now we only have one transaction left, and this is an electronic withdrawal from Verizon um, Wireless, and it has it charged as utilities. I want that charged as telephone. So certainly we could go in and we could change it like we have in the past here in the last few minutes, right? We could go in and change this, this to telephone and this to Verizon, but I want to do something different. Let's set up a rule so that QuickBooks Online will know how to automatically uh, categorize this transaction uh, every month so we don't have to go in and do it every month so let's go up here and let's create a rule for this banking transaction I'm gonna give you a little tip here instead of just clicking on rules let's right click on rules and then hit open link in new window and look at that we can actually have two windows going for QuickBooks online at the same time that's quite the time saver Okay, so let's create a new rule. And let's call this, I'm just going to name this rule Verizon Wireless because it really only applies to this one vendor. Okay, this is going to be applied to money out transactions in, um, let's just say it's only in this one account we're looking at, which is our business checking account. Okay, and it includes the description contains. So let's look over here. What does this description look like? Electronic withdrawal, Verizon Wireless. So let's just say it contains Verizon and see if that's enough. That should be enough to identify it. If when it finds a transaction that the description contains Verizon, we want it to be an expense. We want it added to our telephone. Okay, phone service. The payee, we want to be Verizon. Okay, we need to add it as a vendor. Okay, um, so I guess we still have to select it. There we go, Verizon. Why is it not selecting Verizon? Okay, there we go. And if we wanted to, we could do a tag, but we're not using tags in this company. Okay, so um, automatically confirm transactions this rules apply to. Um, I'm going to take that off. I want to actually see it and then I'll add it. Okay, so let's hit save. Now there we go. We can see our rule there. Let's go back to our bank feed. Now we'll have to update it. So I'm just going to hit my refresh button. And hopefully this will now be assigned to our telephone expense. Yes, there we go. Perfect. See, so because it had Verizon in the description, it added a payee of Verizon and added our um, utilities and phone service. Now, if I hit add, I think we're going to have a problem because I don't think it added a class. No, it didn't. So we're still going to have to open this up and we're going to have to add the class. Okay, so let's hit add. And there we go. 
So all of our transactions have been accepted. Now notice the bank balance here and in QuickBooks is not correct. That's because it's a little difficult to show this to, to get a bank feed as an example because you know you can't make up a make up a, a fake bank account. Um, and so this is just off because this is a sample. Normally um, if all of your transactions have cleared the bank that are in QuickBooks this will be the same otherwise this can be off for any outstanding transaction so this screen here is not the same as your bank reconciliation there is a separate bank reconciliation tutorial so if you want to reconcile your bank I would just google fit small business QuickBooks online bank reconciliation and you can look at our other tutorial okay now let's look at the rules and see if there is a way to have it automatically set the class for this transaction. So let's go to edit. Here we go. Assign more. Here we go. Class administrative. Now we won't have that problem. Okay. Now it'll automatically sign the administrative class and all we'll have to do is hit add and we'll be done. So save us some time in the future. Okay, great. And that is managing your bank transactions in QuickBooks Online. I hope this was helpful. Please check our other 46 free QuickBooks Online tutorials by Googling Fit Small Business QuickBooks Online Tutorials.